Well, we're on anyway. Well, we're on anyway. Yeah. So there's that. There's that. There's me talking about that. Hey, yeah. Dog. Oh, yo, yo. Oh, hey. <laughs> Here we go. We have an interruption. All right. Nice. Cassette technology rocks, man. It rocks. <laughs> You're tuned to the American Moron Entertainment Network to present the P word. You're listening I don't to mean the P. Moron I mean Entertainment P. Network. Day, day. Hey, guys, what's going on? There you go. And baby. Here. Welcome or, back. Oh, that's lovely. Yes. It's hard to call you Jimmy. I just hate that name so much. We are going to have some special guests on tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't gotten all the information. Uh, Jim hasn't gotten all the information, but we've got some some somebody in the music industry is coming on. Um, and it's supposed to be pretty cool. I heard something about Brian Adams and Led Zeppelin is all I know. Mm, Brian Adams is cool. I thought people didn't like him. Hello, Anne Marie. So that'll be cool. And uh, oh, Anne Marie's here. I got to say something very quickly. Sure. That we, we never ever get to, but we have one finally. I just want to make sure we say happy birthday to the ever amazing Kelly Crew. Kelly Crew, January 26 years 26 old. 26 years old. Happy birthday. We uh, we couldn't let that go by, man. Go and, and also, yes. this show is going to be a year old in about a month. That's crazy. But that's what, yeah. that's what uh, lockdown does to you. Yeah, you get stupid and drunk and you use a lot of tissues. Yeah. Lotion. You're already... Don't forget about lotion. No, I don't. No, I use lotion. We do. No. We 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 use the same. Uh, yeah, yeah, you do the same thing I do. I know what you do. fucker. So I also have a, a little special thing coming up um, very very shortly in the show. Uh, a little special thing. Just a little special thing. It's for. Um, it's like a chihuahua for Matt Porter. And Larry Barrow, specifically for Larry, but Matt wanted to hear something. So I found uh, the original demo tapes from Trifalon. Uh, it was a band I was in back in like 1984-ish, somewhere in there. And the band uh, did some demos. And so I found, I found that stuff and hooked up the old cassette deck and put it through the board tonight, which is how you're hearing some of this other music, which is actually instinct. Um so as soon as I know that they're in house uh, and and listening, we will put that on. I, I I don't see any comments, and the problem is, I can't see who's actually watching or listening to the show on oh. Facebook. I don't have that ability. But uh, we also have Beer Cat coming on tonight. And yep, she's she's here. She's we're gonna do some stuff with her and her special guest. Um, so a special uh, simulcast of her show, sort of through our show. It's gonna be interesting. Things are getting uh, getting a little wacky tonight. And hi to Lisa as well, who brought us beer for a couple of weeks and is totally awesome. And I will uh, probably run into on Saturday. She's I just got acknowledgement that Larry's here. I, I don't see that Matt is listening. Hopefully, he he will be here in the next couple minutes. How dare he? I'll give him. I'll give him to eight forty. How's that sound? All right, fine. And then we'll. Uh, if he's not here by eight forty, then we'll uh, we'll we'll just jump right into it. There's there's Kitty Cat. Let's go. Let's go. What are my my stepson's saying? I know. I just yeah. I hello. Have, I have some hot drop in new news for you that I just heard about. Oh please. So Rat Rod is in the studio right now and about to drop their fourth album, and I got the title of it. Very nice. Oh, you tell. Yeah, and I, I was given permission, so it's called Four on the Floor. Makes sense. Yeah, fourth album. Yeah. So Thank God it's not three on the floor. Is that just well, two on, better, it's two on the floor is bad. Well, that was the fifth. Yeah, oh, two on the floor is good if it's horizontal. I just want to know if every so Larry, you can can you hear Cat talking? I just want to make sure that you can hear her speaking through the uh, interwebs. Uh, just to make sure we have all of our. You've been watching. Uh, yeah, it's pervasive all over. YouTube, true, true. Uh, folklore. 
because I think I can find a set of headphones that might fill the echo that I think bothers you guys at some at some point. You know this song, Cat? This is a uh, little Terry and Terry Russell and Paulie. Awesome! Everybody can hear everybody. Nice. I'm just like we can play music and not get in trouble with yeah, Pakistan and Iran. Only person's in trouble is me, probably with my mom or something. That's all right. Why are you playing that again? You're playing that music again in the cast about him? It sounds like Cat is dying in the bedroom. Hmm. Um. Uh, Jim blush like he's never blushed before. Wait, what's all that? I'm about to make uh, Jim blush like never blushed before. Me? I blush all the time. Hold on. I was on the intramural blushing in high school. Why do you sound so muffled? Uh, it's your phone. Is it my phone? That's why I said. Do you want me to go get earphones out of my car? Uh, that might be best. Yeah, yeah it's a little weird. All right, let me go get I'm going to like repeat the form into your microphone. Yeah, let me go get your phone and then I'll, uh... In the White I'll, House. I'll come back. All right. It sounds like she's, like, in one of those special effects movies or something. Or, or uh, Mars Orbit. Yeah. yeah I'm no, it's not that. It's not that. It's me. Yeah, it's just... Every, it's, it's a... That's what happens when... It, it's somebody's... Uh, bandwidth and geeky, nerdy shit like yeah. that. So, just check it. Is, is Matt poured out? Matt put her out there. I, I see six numbers. I'm, just, I'm just checking. You want to do this while we, you're waiting? Yeah, we could do that. All That's right. cool. We're going to do this while we're going to do the uh, beer of the week thing. All right, I'm going to... You gotta do, do Okay, so I, I, I got to play it, don't I? God damn it. All right. I hope the, uh... Ooh, that's loud. Look at them turn that down. All right, so we're going to do our beer of the week. It's from uh, Von C. Brewing Company in Norristown. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, you got some interest in having in uh, old school there. Really? Yeah, and, and they never. I, um, they were probably drinking when they asked. Yeah, I uh, I sent, uh, who the hell did I talk about? That we reviewed, I think it was Kunchahak and Beer uh, Brewery. I uh, mentioned, they said something about one of their, their beers that we uh, reviewed. And uh, I said, oh, yeah, we reviewed that on the podcast. And their uh, marketing director loved it. Oh, good. And I was like, yeah, you can. That explains it. the extra 20 I saw in your wallet. That's what that was. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, no, actually, I, I mowed my dad's lawn. So. Uh, Matt Porter is on now. So nice. hang in there, Matt. We're going we're gonna to do the, the beer review. It might take a minute for me. And then we'll, then we'll, hop, we'll hop right into Trifalon. Here my cassettes going in. It's like I'm, I'm like I'm putting carts. In I know. Well, yeah, really. All right, not to be uh, crass, but look at the head on this thing. Yours looks nice. I, I don't have a glass. I Damn, I'm gonna have to drink it out. Silent of Silent Scream it's... is what we're gonna play. Oh my god, that's correct. Must skull. Hmm. Let's try it. Sweet. Ooh, but well, we gotta go there. Yeah, this is really, really good. It's a very nice, relatively hoppy pale ale. Really, really. Uh, really it's Von C Brewing Company. It's called In the Grass. It's a pale ale. Um, I, I just want to correct this? Larry. It's not 1989. Could be. I did that recording. The recording we're going to play in a little bit. Oh. And we did that recording in 1986 or 87 because I was, I was still at Bucks County Community. So that would make it. it I think we did that recording in 85. To be, to be honest with you. It was 1985, so you're four years ahead of the game. You are you are not allowed to watch Vice Grip Garage for a month. Why am I talking you're to my fingers? You're becoming Derek. I love him. <laughs> He's the greatest man, <laughs> Derek. I, I if you listen to this show sometime, I, I that would be great. Vice Grip Garage is. I'll send him a note. The greatest. He just hit one million followers, if you will. I guess that's how oh, that works on YouTube. Sure. Um, and we also, uh, my wife and I watch a guy named Pompsy, and he mm. does really funny, entertaining uh, reviews of Las Vegas, which I just booked a trip. Is that the dude who walks around? And I'm around, going right? there. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. He goes hotel rooms and reviews. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm going back to Vegas, baby. When are you going? In April. Bastard. I don't want to say exactly when, but you'll know because we won't be doing the show unless I do it from there. Um, and, yeah, and I might have to. Yeah, I might have to come down here and deal with stuff. Paula's here. Hello, Paula. Hey, hey, Paula. Um, we stay in that uh, our favorite hotel, the Dar, which is now the Dara, part of Aria. That it, sounds dirty. It does. Aria is a badass hotel. It, it is all connected. It's all part of it. And then it's like a taint. There's a um, a bridge behind uh, Aria and Vidara that goes to the Bellagio, which is usually how we walk out in the morning. It's pretty interesting. But getting back to the beer. We, we, it's we it's like, very, very nice. Oh, I mean, this would go well with a nice meal. Kind of cloudy and uh, amber and nice. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. We've had a pretty good run, man. No, the, these have been some of the best beers. Yeah. We, we need to visit some of these places. I'm in. And talk to these guys about doing a show. Sundays are always the best for that, uh, as long as they have food. Mm. Our video signal keeps dro- dropping in and out, I will say that. And we're a little drippy. So do, do I do I do this while we're drinking the beer, or do we keep talking about the beer? What are we doing? I'm liking the beer. I'm feeling a little numb. Um, oh, nice. Should have eaten today. But... um. No, let's uh, yeah, let's do your thing. Let's do this. We, this will be good. Okay. Well, this is the internet preview or debut, if you will, of uh, of Trifalon, a band from Philadelphia, Northeast Philadelphia, to be precise, from back in the nineteen eighties. Oh my goodness! What is going That's on? That's me. Are you calling yourself? No, I was calling somebody who called me. Uh, that's not how any of I'm this I'm going to kill that. And you call me back, whoever called me. You know who you are. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, my God. And everything. I got headphones. Is that better? Much, much better. better. Yeah. yeah. That tells you a lot about how much oh, that. Oh, God. I got to. I got to. I got to. Okay. Here we go. This is Trifalon. The Silent Scream. Yep. Ah. A little dead air for a second because I don't know the bit spacing. It's an old cassette. Yeah. 
Justin Martel. Ah, here comes the other guy, Larry. Oh, that guy, okay. So there it is. Nice. That was it. After all these years. And if you remember last week, uh, maybe some of you do, I don't know. Matt, uh, Matt actually it happened said, last week, yes. He actually he typed into the, the portal, scream, 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 scream. And it's funny, the production work. That was done on a multi-track recording studio. To get that echo, the producer had to actually unplug the vocal line and then jam it back into a delay. So it would jam go it. scream, 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 scream. Uh -huh. that, that probably took the longest part of the recording process. I'm just waiting for a slip. Just waiting for a slip. Slip, slip, slip. My halo, slip. On, uh, ah. my halo on okay? So anyway, that's what I live for. Oh. Anyway, that, that was a... I mean, listen, that song was written by a bunch of, like, 14-year-olds, quite frankly. I think Larry wrote all the lyrics in, to that. In the uh, midst of all that puberty horror. Yes. And then here's the other song. I'll just play this other song. Uh, it, this, is, this is 77 Gold. No covering the camera. Cruising Susan. This is another song from the same band. And, you know, listen, this is, this is old school. Like literally old school, not a reference to my my cover band. Those guys, yeah. But this is this is funny. This is I used to play this stuff on my radio show in college. Sorry, that's me. What did you do? Clean it out. Oh, that's gross. Sorry, my keyboard. Yeah, my keyboard got a little wet.
<laughs> the whole, you know, whole Jay Giles thing going on there. Yeah, it's set technology at its worst. Yeah. yeah. And there nice. you have it. So, so Lara, if you want to, oh, I got to turn that off. Hold on. Oh, wait, Ms. Rose is with this as well. You can call in too, Larry. You can, you can Hello. call in and be on the show. Matt Porter, you can call in and be on the show. All I got to do is go over to um, Podbean and, and get on there if one of you wants. So I might be able to get you through my phone connection here. If you just there is that. do your instant message to me and we can do a phone call and see if it comes through. The Mine's phone. busy and you will stay the hell away from it. His is. We are going to leave that alone. Mm-hmm. Don't touch it. Leave my Don't phone touch alone. it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. We're hoping. We can't even play that, can I? We're hoping for the crimson glory to come up over. Well, sort of the horizon. Hmm. We got close for so a like moment. sunrise. Yes. Gotcha. There's something about that crimson glory. I gotcha. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I did. Uh oh. What's the matter? There's all kinds of stuff going on over there. Wait. Oh, can't hear. Uh, beer we, cat. Nope. Because she's talking to you through that instead of the uh, no, that's that's I don't think that's uh, let me see. Hey, there we go. Okay, now I can hear. You, I think oh, we got a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah, that's <sighs> oh my, oh my. Now try to talk. Touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it. Easy now. Don't make me get the tears. No microphone's not working, madame. Damn the consequences. Yeah, I think the mic's not working. Sorry. Try try taking it out and putting it back in. Dirty bastard. Who, who's that in the background? We got a million people on. So for those that are just tuning in, you missed. You missed the interwet, interwebs, See? internet. Debut. Sigmund Freud just burst of, into flames. Of Trifalon. We we did uh, Silent Scream and 77 Gold. I mean, that's, that is gold. That is 80s gold underground band in the basement kind of fun. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it's wet. Do you believe that shit? More songs. Well, the only thing I have now, I don't have any more of a... Of a trifle on unfortunately i might have a band practice tape somewhere i'd have to dig next week um the rest of the stuff i have is instinct um so we did start the show off with that and i don't know if anybody really cares about it uh at this point that we've heard it to death so that's where we're at uh feel free if you call me through your instant message matt what's that i hear something oh we can we can put you on the show, Matt, and uh, it's 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 low tech fidelity at its best, because that's what we do here. Rocket. Yep. So many times is what we started the show with. That's correct. Mm. We did. So I I know that we're going to have some other stuff coming up later. I think we're going to have some uh, some guests on. Supposedly, if we could find out from Cat who they're going to be, I'd like to promote it. And, She's having uh, an issue. Can you hear us, Cat? You can hear us okay? I'm not sure if she can. This is... She's having some technical technical difficulties at her end at this point, and that's putting a little bit of a downer on things, obviously. Who is that? I hear... Mm-hmm. Is that Jerry Seinfeld? Yes. It did sound like Jerry Seinfeld. We're going to get dinged for that, probably. No, nah, we're not. Well, I want to ask Miss Rose a question. Sure. Go for, go for it. Hey, uh, you you were at Screwballs last week. You left. What happened? Uh, that is something I do not want to bring up on the live. 
That's okay. I just figured it was your dad being a dick and I was going to yell at him, but that's okay. I, it was a mix of him and other things. I, was, I, I told him when I, he walked by, I'm like, I told you to buy her a drink. Dude. It was funny, Rose. I, I noticed you were there. Obviously, you helped us load in and carry stuff in. That was, was very gen- generous of you. Thank you so much. And uh, and then I, I noticed that you were just poof, gone. And I was like, maybe she's sitting in the back booth or something, hiding or something. No, I was having a lot of problems with my anxiety because of just coming back on campus and then everything. It's just been a really hard to adjust because I also started right back up at work. And, and what is it you do for, for, for money? Um, I work as a library assistant at my college campus. That's oh, awesome. Sweet. That's a sweet gig. One of the most memorable women I ever met in my life worked at the co- the college uh, library at Temple University, but I won't mention her name. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. I really like it, but I've been working uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 8 to 10 p.m. So if you really need to take a book out, they are the days to go to the library, folks. If you don't go to that school, get a card. Maybe you can take a book out. I don't know. Maybe they have open policy at their library. Do you never know? I don't know if they do or not. <laughs> what is going on over there, Jim? I'm working on it. All right. I got it. Got it. Got it. Jump got it. Jiminy. Don't I take it. I got this. Mm-hmm. I'm working on it. Is it somebody calling in? Yeah. Oh, my. Well, well, I hope you do fix it because I keep thinking it's my damn phone. No, no, for once, yours is actually working well. We don't have the, uh, the the motorcycles in the background, and yeah, and it's just too cold. Crazy. Too cold for them, I think. Now, once the summer sets, warm weather, I'll start having the speedway up front again. So you you have your headphones in though, Jim, right? Yeah. Other Jim, I got the who him or me? Yeah. You, yeah. I got the the earbuds in, yeah. Yeah, see, this works much better. You should do this every time. Every time. Well, that's what I've always had. I always had the earbuds in. We were picking up something, but listen, that's your right. That is your right. Oh, you've been playing with that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm quick on the trigger. I am hungry. Mmm. Yep. It for the border. Yep. Yep. See, her stuff was working until the headphones happened. So it's not plugged in correctly. Hmm. Anyway, hopefully we can get that resolved because supposedly she's got somebody really special to bring on the radio show. Yeah, herself. Which is not a radio. It's a it's a interweb show. Stop saying interweb. Interweb. But that would be cool. Hey, Mark Perry's online. Mark Perry's here. Now he should hey. call. Is he talking? Hey, what's going on? Mark. Hey. So you you played locally, either you did or you're going to very very soon, correct? Yeah. Blonde James Bond, Blonde is Mark's yeah. band. And uh, when are you playing? I think you're playing at, at Peppers, right? Yeah, Friday. This Friday, Mark will be at yeah. Peppers with Blonde James Bond, Blonde. Uh, Peppers is a King of Prussia bar, and I am Captain King of Prussia. Uh, by default, now I used to be Northeast Philly. You were major King of Prussia. No, I'm Captain. Oh, huh? damn it. I don't know. Damn, I, I jump on the call and I get a promotion like instantly. Thank you, Paul. That's what we do. Listen, man. Wow. You guys are you, know, you guys don't miss a miss a trick here. We are total whores. We'll plug you. We will plug you. We'll get you a Thank plug. You. With six people Take that, that any way you want. You know, they just there's so many people listening. You'll you'll have your your the bar's gonna be packed. Uh, exactly. Well, as well. Oh, that, that was for you, Mark. Apparently, the girls like you. Dear God, well, <laughs> I only called in to say hello to Doc because he is the man. So anyway, we'll, we'll get that out of the way. Doc, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Not much. Chilling. Hey, listen, before it gets too late and I don't get a chance to say anything, it's I got to him. Let him talk. <laughs> yeah, let me talk. I hardly ever talk. You guys never let me talk. It's your microphone. I was out with my son the other night. And we ran into a guy who's pretty cool. Some of you might know him, Mike Natalini. Yeah, yeah. We, you must have been yeah, the record I store, know Mike. Yeah. So, we, so we were shooting a breeze with him, and I, I pulled him aside for a minute, and I introduced him to my son. And I told my son about how he was in Manus. First of all, my kids love you guys, uh, Paul, old school, and all them guys. So the way I described Manus to my son was. Manus was my old school back then. 
Oh, sure. Definitely. They were, they were the band I followed all over the place. Yeah. We started shooting shit with him for a little bit with, with Mike. And he, he brought up a good point. He brought up a good point. Like how back then you can go anywhere and see live music. And now today it's just like certain places here and there. It's very true. Um, so now the thing, the thing I'm wondering is, do, do you guys think it's just like the attitude or everything, or just the music, the different styles of music today, or or the kids today, or what, what the hell? Well, it's 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 absolutely the times we live in. It's not that the kids don't want to see live music; they don't even know what it is. Yeah, it's easier to stream. Hey, listen, when when we were of age and we were going to clubs in the '80s and the '90s, and you know, somewhat late '70s for some of us. Uh, it was a different world. Uh, there, there was no internet. You, you listened to the radio. You listened to the radio yeah. like we listened to we we listened to internet or pay attention to the internet. That was your that was your news source for everything that was happening until MTV came out. And yeah, TV was just for you, porn on that weird like that's, messed up. That's channel. for people. Channel, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. squint your eyes and look at. Sound it. makes me hard. That's you know, wrong. Back when I was a kid, so, I I listened to MMR and WYSP. And that's where we got our information. We knew when the concerts were coming. And they would talk about places like Grendel's Lair. Oh, yeah. And they would talk about the Empire Rock Club. And they would have live simulcasts from there. And it was very exciting to go out and see these bands that were about to get signed or they were signed or they were they were on the cusp of it, whatever you want to call it. And any, any of the bands that you could go out and see in a local band, a club, anything could happen. Anything. You, you just didn't know. And... and Live music was where it was at. Uh, nowadays, it's cover bands, um, but back then it was it was original act. And there, when I when I say originals, I mean bands that wrote their own music. Mike Natalini was in a band that did all that back then. I was an in Instinct. Um, there were bands that were that were just you know doing it and making it. And you know I'm going to see one of them at M3 this year in May. Heaven's Edge. They're going to play in front of about 20,000 people at, 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 at M3. They never even had that opportunity. That's the crazy part. You know, the well, most guys are going to play at least in front of 20 people. At 20 M3. at yeah. least. Yeah. Maybe 20.2. You never know. I, I got a 14.5% chance of that happening. There were several hundred people there at one point. The, the one, yeah. yes. Yeah. I have a feeling this is going to be pretty epic. But in any event, uh, the world has changed. The The... The way that music is delivered, obviously, has changed, and that plays a big part because, you know, when we were younger, you you bought records, tapes, CDs, whatever it was. You heard about it on the radio. Sorry, I got distracted. There was a word uh, in my brain. Uh, You're working. There was a, it was a different world uh, when things were going on back then. Um and, and there was a lot of virtuosity in the bands. You know, there were bands that, that were great songwriters. And that in the hard rock world, it was all about virtuosity. It was actually a lot like sport. I mean, you know, we would go see these bands and you were watching the lead guitar player to see what technique he did that nobody had done before in the local scene. How good was the drummer? Was he a double bass drummer? How good was the bass player? What vocal technique did the vocalist bring in? This is the way, a crown of, a crown of balls. Uh, let's, what, what was the world? Uh, what, what, what could we see in the local club, um, with these bands? And that does not exist today. You know, if, 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 and I'm not taking a shot, if, if, if your big excitement is seeing a band like old school, which we are really a throwback to that time, just older, fatter, and not much wiser. Um, it's just, it's just not the same Back then, every band had their own look. They got up. They had a thing. They had a, they had they had a gimmick, whatever it was, um, and and that is not going on now. And that's because kids don't, you know, the younger generation. I shouldn't say all kids, but a lot of kids they don't um, pay attention to music. Music is not the most important thing in the world. But, hello, it's uh, it's you know, it's what is it? Hey, Tom Adkins, speaking of the old days, you know, it's. Today, kids are into to rap and stuff like that. They're into video games. There's a lot of diversions out there. It's not the same yeah, diversions. Yeah. Listen, when I was a kid, we didn't know what Kiss looked like. And that was, 
That was crazy. Like you were obsessed with the fact that you didn't know what these people looked like. We'd run to the store and get a magazine. There's a picture. I, I saw they had a picture. Uh, uh, Gene Simmons, half his face is exposed. Like, like, what are you talking about? We didn't know who they were. Not until they went on MTV in 1983. It's, or, when it's, we saw, or when we saw the movie, um, The Phantom Menace. What was it called? Remind me, please. That, the, Phantom, the, 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 Phantom of the, the Park was the first yeah. time I got to see that, kids actually move. Literally, the, the movie was the first time I ever saw it, saw them. Yeah, I I had only seen record albums and you know um, magazines. I there was I didn't have a VHS. There was no VHS in 1977. There was. You had to be it wasn't at my house. At my house, not my poor house in Northeast Philly. Anyway, so there there's my um, quick summary. So Tom what? Atkins. If you were if you were calling and you'd be able to say so, uh, Pat Schumacher, you would as well. He was there. He was in Sick Vicky. That was a band that that was in the scene big time. Um, it's a different world. It's a different world. But in this world, I can see things that I've not seen before in a way that I've never witnessed them before. World sucks. You know. I mean, just look at what's happening in front of me right now. It's a. It's just a whole nother world. Oh, over there. I'm sorry. <clears throat> sorry, I'm to the right of you. I thought you were- there's just something about a crown of balls. What? Yeah, I'm not even sure what the hell you. I doing. don't know what I'm talking about. Mm. That sounds like a good, cool band name, though. Crown of balls. Crown of, crown balls. of balls. Yeah, but yeah. you gotta say it like you're Italian. Crown of balls. No, crown no, no. Of- crown it's- of balls. Now, see, Tom, I, Tom, Tom says Ac- cannibals for the people that. You know, th- this is a guy who's who's listening through the the internet. Internet and uh, Tom said, "You guys are on to something." The biggest difference: the only way to see Led Zeppelin was to buy a ticket, wait five months till they showed up. Today, hit YouTube, see every video. Th- there was none of that. There was none of that. There was no YouTube. YouTube was your grandfather telling the same bad, dirty joke over and over. That's what YouTube was. I didn't like that. Or if you were, if you had some money. And you really like Star Wars? You went every Saturday to see the same goddamn movie over and over. I paid a dollar fifty and stayed all day. My mom couldn't hire a babysitter. Oh, they they used to do that. Yeah, it was a dollar fifty. Yeah, some yeah. of them you could just stay all well, day. Well, no, you couldn't. You just had to. You just had to do. You had to play the wait, game. Wait, wait, wait. I I can hear it around. I heard something. I said just like in old school strip club. There she is. Yeah. You can hear me. I can hear you now. But what's the difference between an old school strip club and a modern strip club? It's pretty much the same. All day for a dollar fifty. Oh yeah, and the chlamydia, and that yeah. (laughs) Oh, Oh, golly! My uncle doesn't work there anymore. (laughs) Uncle Al, Uncle Uncle Herman, Uncle Herman, Herman. Yeah, Jim, am I your? All able to hear me all of a sudden. I don't know. Now we can hear you. Just don't bend over. Can anybody else see me? No, No. just us. No. I mean, we we can hear you. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Is that Paula? Is that for Paula? I think that was that you, Rose? Yeah, that was me. Yeah, that was Rose. So, Mr. Robbins, uh, do you want me any other? Give me like really cool shout out. We got to let the chicks talk. Yes, uh, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Mr. Robbins, do you have anything else you'd like to add to the to the following diatribe that you set me on? Oh, no, that was that was the whole thing. I mean, it was weird. I mean, he starts talking about that. It's like it just blew my mind. It took me back to them old days about going everywhere and this and that. And even the bars around the neighborhood around here where I'm at now had live bands. And now really nobody has anything. Now there were a million, around our area suck. There were a million places, and I shouldn't say a million, but there were a lot of places to go see live bands. Cover bands, original bands, they were everywhere, and the competition was fierce. And, and the music was excellent. I mean, I want, you want to talk about a band that, that really set the lev- the bar, in my opinion. Mike LeCompte, still around, yeah. still doing it today. Originals and covers. He mixed b- the best of both worlds. Ended up becoming the singer, no. Mike LeCompte. Okay. He became the singer for uh, for um, Tangier for a little bit. Um, 
just a Mike's bro- the man. brilliant musician, wonderful human being, somebody I consider a friend, um, just unbelievable man. But you could go see Mike any weekend. You he today and thirty years ago, he was he's he was always somewhere. What in the name? Of- I don't yeah, know what's going. Having a good time. Oh, yeah. it's just you know. Chongo called in. <laughs> rang the bell. What's that, Chongo? Timmy's in the well. I wonder if I can find him. Uh oh, Chongo. Uh oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that was eerie. That was really, really, really eerie. Yes. Oh my God. So, uh, Tom, the, the call-in number is if you go to my page and you call me through Facebook, that would work. Or you can log in to, and this is ne- this is going to go flying over the top. Uh, you can go to the Podbean uh, program and call you in through attention. that. No, no, I am allowed allowed to be distracted. No, nope, pay attention. As you. I'm this is my fucking house, Gus. My <laughs> fucking house. If you don't like it, you can take his house and his inner way. You gotta take my shit. You drank it already. That's fine. It was a gift. <laughs> I'm gonna be there next week, so I'm very excited. What's that? Brad. I'm gonna be there next week. Oh, cool. I, had to, I was gonna be here this week. But that cool. that all depends on the dog. Where is the dog? Wait. She's locked in my, in my bedroom. Because you didn't bark at me. Dude, I I had like the dudes from Village Idiot. I called them and they had a special growler set up for you. Dude, I hear you. I'm not kidding because they don't make the the Elvis beer anymore that I was telling you about, and they brewed a batch for me because I wear their shirt around town. See, I do that, and I just get like all kinds of shit from lawyers. No, I didn't mean it like that for the, all the girls out there. I didn't mean it like I'm hot as shit and I wear their shirt around town. Like, I cut it, like, and I turned it, like, into, like, Are they giving you a free growler? Great googly woogly. They're giving, me, they're giving me three free growlers. There you go. I'm calling Tom Atkins to see if this works. <laughs> but, uh, no self-deprecation. So, they're giving you free beer. Because I, I got them to make girl free shirts. Tom. Like, you should have had to cut them. Nice. Yeah. Can, can you guys hear Tom? I think I can. You got me? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to Oh, cool. So, Tom, you're now on the show. Hey, it's good to see you guys. You too, Tom. Tom I, I just, Tom used I, to I, own I, the house on Keebler, Jim. Which one? I, I, that the real house. Big one, that real big monster. The, the one that looks like a staved church? It used to. Uh, not there's two of them. There's, there's the, two one, of them. There was the one the Wheelin Zone that's getting all jacked up now, and then the one that looks like a gingerbread house. The Wheelin House is my old house. Oh, really? He lives in Texas yeah. now. Holy hell, man. Yeah, I I uh, I used to have a ton of real estate in Philadelphia, and then I uh, moved to Jersey. Oh, uh, turn turn your uh, turn your speaker down on your what you're listening to us with. We're getting a, a delay. Oh, hang on, if you don't mind, Tom. Yeah, I've known Tom for about thirty years. Is that better? Much better. That's yes. a great house. We used to do Halloween parties in that for years. Oh yeah. Hey, the reason I wanted to call you is because. Uh, some of you may know, I, I went from music to real estate to politics, right? I, uh, I, I did a, I Fox for like 20 years as a guest. I wanted to put together my own show, and I couldn't do it. But the internet let me do it. I mean, I have more viewers right now than CNN. <laughs> we get seven, 800,000 viewers a week. CNN gets about, if they're lucky, 500,000 for a show. And the reason I was able to do that is because you get the internet. So the, the internet giveth and the internet taketh away, right? Hmm, Interesting. And the same thing if you're a band. If you're if you're a band, you want to put out a video. Hey, Justin Bieber became uh, uh, popular because he got on uh, YouTube. And shitty because he showed up at Teterboro Airport smelling like weed. That bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of like like I'm, I'm with you guys. I remember the old days. I'm 64 now. I remember the old days. I, mean, I got to see Zeppelin in '75. It was like the highlight of my life at that time. And, and presence still, tour. Kind of I was the presence right? tour, right? Um. Yes. Yeah. Achilles last stand. Yeah, no. No. I'm sorry. Wait. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. No. It was uh, 75. No. That was. Um, oh man. Let me think for a second. Well, it was either uh, it was either presence or the song remains the same. Mm-mm, let me think for a second. Do uh, the, the the double album. Um, 
Oh, the big ones. They did the just cashmere. It was, it was like graffiti. If you want to call it a single, I don't think they ever really had anything. Uh, they they uh, that that was like yeah WMMR from one of those guys. They just played it like the night before. I was like, wow, that sounds, sounds incredible. Why? It's pretty. It's pretty cool. You're you're coming in and out with your microphone, so uh, I don't oh, know. Yeah. It's probably your telephone. Uh, is this better over here? Sounds a little better. Physical Graffiti is the <laughs> album that you're referring to. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Physical Graffiti. Physical, physical graffiti yeah, the, the, uh, when, that, when that album came out, um, Casimir was the first quote-unquote single we had off that, I think. And uh, I mean, Mark played it the night before. And we were, and we, you get to see it live in person. It's pretty cool. But today, that stuff happens all the time. And it's, 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 the the there downside is, of it is... Yeah, there's no mystique it, today at all in anything. Everything is instantaneous, and it's still yeah. not good enough. Yeah, and there's no big rock gods anymore because it's not that big of a deal anymore. No. Uh, well, I mean, music is not that important, but 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 hip hop is. I mean, if you if you sit down and talk to young people, and I don't mean that in a, in a degrading way, yeah. But uh, those dicks they they <laughs> listen to that music and they you know whatever that's cool. Um, but there's a whole thing going on there that I don't understand, but that's fine. You know, my grandfather. Hey, my parents didn't understand our stuff either. My grandfather yeah. was like, "I don't know what it is you're listening to, but I guess if I was your age, I'd be into the same shit." You know, there's no <laughs> melody. That's what he used to say to me. He's, my grandfather lived with me uh, from 1979 to 1987 when he passed. He was born in 1900, so you know it was never hard wow. to figure out what his age was. And he was a guitar player. Wow. And a man, man, mandolin player and a violin player and a he mandolin's played, a bitch. He played every stringed instrument you could get your hands on. A zither, probably. Okay. Honestly, Jim, I'm not. I'm I, 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 I just don't even know. But there is a big difference, I think, from what, when you listen to like um, uh, you listen to all the different types of music that were coming along from you know every five, ten years, something new would come along. Hip hop is different because it's not really all that musical. It, it's a different artistic form. So we think yeah. of it, we think, you know, musician or musically oriented people tend to think of things from a music centric world. And, and I'm, I'm just trying to throw out the, the okayness of this. Okay. And that's a technical word. Okayness. It's an artistic expression of poetry and, uh, uh, heartache or life. It's, it's a form of poetry. Um, and it, it, it reaches a different mass uh, on a different level than music did when we were younger. Um, music was emotional when, when we were growing up. It was all about expression of feeling, I feel like. Oh, what happened to Pat? Why did he bail? He just, because he was on the phone, he's gone, but he's still here. He's oh, listening. Okay. Because he can call in too. He, he, have he, he was on the phone. Well, he can, he can get, come back on. I mean, I, I think Tom he and him would. He's just being patient. They would hit it off really well. Do you know, you know uh, Pat yeah. Schumacher from uh, Sick Vicky? I do not. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you knew that Great band. Great band, though. Yeah. Great he's, band. He was the bass player. And, uh, Tom, oh, how they really? Okay. Pat and I have uh, rekindled our friendship of, of many, many years ago. Um, he was actually at an old school this past weekend. We were playing our, our wonderful covers. Um, and I got very little time to speak with him. Um, you were busy. I, I was a little busy, and I was having a heart issue. Yeah. Just so everybody knows, unfortunately. One of the tapes I'm sitting here looking at from Instinct, by the way. I have a live cassette sitting here because I went through my cassettes. It's live? It's from Bonnie's. Remember Bonnie's? Bonnie Rocks. And Atco. It was a strip club. Was it? That yeah. became oh. a hard rock yeah. covers Sorry, club. Expertise. And... Just so you know, Kat, that's where I met Mike Smith. That's where I met Mike Smith back in the day, Kat. Shut the front door. No, we played on the I same bill. The phone with him before I got on with you guys. Hey, let me throw something else at you guys. Sure, it's kind of interesting. Please. No, I'm married. I remember the first time I ever went to a good studio it was Alpha International Studios. Uh, they're, they're not around anymore. I don't think but they, were, they were down now. No, they're and, gone. Uh, we were the, we were the second band in. So we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> it was pretty impressive. You, know, you walk in the wall, you, know, you walk in the studio, and, they, and uh, every time you used to walk in the studio, they have all, their, all the gold records and platinum records that are on the wall. We walked in, and there was just one. 
I forget what voice to have voice. It was like, oh, it's a live record from a wall. That was it. So it was pretty cool. And that, uh, that studio had a 32 track studio. And we're, you were recording on this. Yeah, a little bit. That was amazing. I don't think I told her she had a reverb system that cost like, you know, $200,000 or something. And that studio was a multi, multi million dollar studio back in 75. But today sure. you can go out and buy all that gear for like 300 bucks and put it on your computer and it's better. Oh, it's way better. And and it, it yeah, so it's it, balanced and compressed and everything does what it's supposed to. Yeah. But that doesn't so, mean the recordings the are just, better. I mean, I would, I would, I would rather listen to physical graffiti than half the stuff that comes out today because everything's pushed up to the max and compressed and, and, and super loud and everything is perfectly balanced. We have a, we have a uh, younger guy's view here. Yeah, um, I think about today's music is that, to me, it's a corporate cash grab. Just, just a lot of love. Own, like, soul. Oh, like that cool. the day. Awful production of miscues, but it sounds great. <laughs> you know, it's it sounds incredible. It's a corporate cash but, grab. I mean, you hear it, like, commercials, you know, everything else and all that. And half the shit that comes out today, it's like the same fucking shit over and over, but with different lyrics. Well, it's it's all sampled. And what they do is, you know, I have a friend, Paul Morgan, who, who uh, Tom knows very well. Um, and he worked for a number of rock stars and also worked in a number of recording studios. And when, when all these modern techniques of recording came in... Okay. The way things work, he, he came home and tell, told me one. He's like, so what they do is they get one take, one take of the guy playing the piece correctly on the guitar or the bass or the drums, and then they loop it. Yeah. So they, the, the song isn't even a real recording. It's fragments of things pieced together to make a song. When, when the stuff I was playing you earlier, that was live in the studio, literally live in the studio. It's, okay, guys, we're on. We're recording, you know, make it happen. And if you fucked up, we had to start over again. If you were lucky, uh, there was enough isolation that they may be able to fix a piece of the song here or there. That doesn't exist today. So the the, the, the level of playing ha- was on a higher bar than it is now. There was true musicianship, uh, true technique um, and craft that went into making music in those days. Yeah, it wasn't like corrected by uh, NASA. No. Yeah. Twisted harder. That's what she said. Yeah. I, there we go. A lot of distractions tonight. A lot of distractions. That's what we work for. The cats. Uh, hey, I got. I got back in some time to say. I got back in some time to say goodbye to you guys. I got to produce my show tonight. All right, Tom. Thanks for thanks for calling in. I just want to tell you, hello, I, I, I stop and listen to the show from time to time, and I love hearing it, man. It's great stuff. Thank you. It's, Thank you. It's I'm, complete nothing, but that's what's great about it. And by the way, every time I come to Philly, I stop in this year. You guys play. It is a lot of fun. You never come yes. up and say hi. Yes, I do. Okay. Well, then I'm drunk. He's, so. he's drunk a whole lot, yeah. <laughs> hi, is that... Is that Mr. Atkins? Is he the diet guy? Oh, thank you. Oh, can I have a bun? Oh, my God. You didn't say hi to me? That was Aaron Burr. Oh, my God. I'm so happy to see him. Somebody get me a diet. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Take care, guys. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Yeah, thanks. Have a good one, man. Take, take it easy, man. Watch Tommy. Watch Tommy. Watch Tommy. All right. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll look into that. Take care, man. Thanks, Tom. Take care. Bye. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys two bands that, I mean, just to be devil's advocate here for a second, because I I get what you're saying. There there is you know, there is some bullshit out there today. Um, however, I'll give you. I'm not two saying bands. it's all bad. Don't take me Don't take me wrong. No, no, I'm not because I mean I I come from the same era you guys do. I mean, <clears throat> but. Two bands. So you probably, and I'm going to say you. Pro, I'm going to guess that you are going to tell me I have never heard of these guys, Dopapod and Goose. No, 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 no. zero, no. Okay, write it down. So, <clears throat> Dopapod is probably the most technically balanced band I've ever heard in my life. From. <laughs> You know, from the time that, you know, I got introduced to Van Halen until now. Um, Goose well, is the I'm, most I'm, amazing. Goose is the most amazing jam band there is today. 
period, bar none. If someone else has a better one, please tell me because I'll go see him. And that might not be your cup of tea, Grand but – He's the best good jam band. You, but that might not be your cup of tea, but that is – they are the best, period. And they are super talented. They, oh. I mean, they're, they're, they're a regular band. I mean, they're a you know, five or six piece band. You know? So anyway, um, th- there, is, there is some talent out there is my point. Um, and they're playing. Um, <clears throat> I don't doubt it. And I'm not, I'm not trying to detract from. No, what, and I'm right? just being devil's advocate. Go ahead. No, no it's not. It's, listen, it's just not the same as whence it was. Uh, agreed. Okay, there was a time where you could go pretty much anywhere, see a great band, uh, and be blown away, and it was it was a common experience. It's the exception, not the rule now. It was the rule and not the exception back before. That's right. Yeah, when you're going to go like see you know, kicks at Hammerjacks, bam, you're there. Really got it. Or you might go see some kid down the street's band that he put together, and these guys are doing sweeping arpeggios at a time where it just came out and just started happening. And, and you know, there, there was a band in Philly called Street Talk. And the guitar player in that band was doing things at that time that were mind-blowing. They're still mind-blowing today, in my opinion. He's, he's an amazing guitar player. Um, and I, I think I've played some of this stuff from them oh, on previous shows. Um, and... Those were the kind of bands that were out there. I mean, you know, of course there was there were crappy bands. You know, there were bands that were just starting out. Everybody's crappy when they're first starting out. You're learning what to do. You're learning how to play. You're learning what to uh, to do when you're bent over on stage and putting the guitar between your legs. So exactly. It's it's all a learning. I was just thinking about that. Um, and you know, not everybody can be Paul Stanley right out of the gate, right? So so. Um, it's just a different world. No matter what, there's always ex- exceptions to the rule. There's always things that that uh, will 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 raise the bar, if you will. But we are not in the same world, and and that's fine. You know? No, agreed. Yep. Yeah, just you go know. check the check those two bands out, and then we'll talk maybe next week. Jim, Jim wrote it down. I wrote it down. He'll send me a message, and I will I will check it out over the next week. Yeah. You know, I I, I um I. I long for those days of, of great music and, and, you know, I play it now, but we didn't try back, back when I used to go to the empire, I used to joke around. We'd, you know, be standing there and saying like, what's going to happen when we're like, you know, in our fifties, they're going to be playing docking in here. Like, well, that's literally what's happening. Yeah. It's in elevators. When people go to see cover bands now, like my band plays docking. It's, we thought that we were joking at the time, but we thought the music would progress and the world would progress with it in terms of, uh, showmanship and, and marksmanship and uh, ability. Um, and it, 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 it just kind of, it leveled off, if you will. Um, and I think, I mean, how, 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 how much better can you get than Vito Brada? Exactly. So, so, th- th- but there is an interesting sidebar to this. So there are a lot of guys on YouTube, specifically rapper guys that are being exposed to, to bands like Iron Maiden and Led Zeppelin right now. And they do these shows where they talk about music. And I don't know if you've seen any of them, but I urge you to go on there and watch these reviews. And they're easy to find on YouTube. And these are guys that are into music because they love music. But you know, they, they're, they're coming from a hip-hop-oriented uh, world. And when they... Yeah, no, I've seen, I've seen those. Go ahead. They're, they're blown away by these bands. They're bl- they're literally blown away on on average. Most of the bands by Iron Maiden every single time. They're blown away by bands like uh, uh, what's the matter? I she was yelling at me. And I didn't wasn't. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have anything. We're getting about. distracted again. Do you want anything? Uh, I'm I'm about to have another beer in a moment. Do you want me to get one? Sure. Um, Let's do one too. Please, please do. Yeah. There's there's and you know what? There's there's some. Want? Heifevesen or some other stuff in there, some German beer. Uh, Jim, Jim just uh, please leave four dollars and ninety nine cents on the counter. Oh yeah, yeah, I got that myself. No, the dog collects at the end yeah, of the no night. No worries. Yeah, yeah I, I always bring singles when I come to Adler's house. Oh, I, I was trying to say Dream Theater, and, and and Matt Porter, he's still listening. He's talking about Street Talk. They were clearly on a whole other level, and unfortunately, that band, like Heaven's Edge. Uh, who did get a record label. They did get a record with, with CBS Columbia, but, but Street Talk never got that opportunity. 
um, because both bands, signed or unsigned, hit the scene at a time where the scene was dying off. It was the end. It was Nirvana had come in. Um, and not that there's anything wrong with Nirvana. There, you know, it just wasn't a talent level on par with what we had been seeing. It's kind of like watching, you know, Barry Bonds and all these guys play baseball at a, at a time when you could be watching Little League. I don't want to watch Little League. You know, it's it's exciting if my kid's doing it, but I'd much rather watch the pros play. And that's the cool thing was you were watching bands on a local level, on a on a low level, if uh, if you want to call it that, a uh, you know, an amateur level that were on par with the pros and it was super super exciting to to watch these bands uh grow and develop and some of them get you know move on to get signed i mean you know we watched um we watched we watched cinderella come around and we watched you know the outbirth of of britney fox from cinderella and watch these bands go and get signed and you know there's people are gonna sit there and say oh cinderella and britney fox they weren't really weren't that great let me tell you something you get up on stage and you play the way they played and play with the proficiency that they did. And I challenge you. Now there's guys out there that are that good. Great. Good for you. What did you do with it? They made it. You didn't. Boom. Thank you. It's not me. There's a lot of noise going on here. I like noise. I saw, I saw Mark like in the running. background. Oh, shit. It's, well, the noise it's, is not coming from me because I'm muting as soon as I stop talking. Probably my... Ah, easy, easy, easy. So t- Tim Fitz- Fitzpatrick, who's on our, our Facebook feed, he, he wrote the following. Street Talk was awesome. I played with Tommy Chambers. That's the drummer. Uh, no, I'm sorry. He was a singer. When, when he was fronting, I, I got screwed up there. Let me, I got something. Come in here. Tommy Chambers, when I was fronting X, X Sean, a.k.a. Expose, <coughs> I just lost all my screens. I just lost all my concentration. What is going on here? Everything's just dropping off my computer as I'm reading. Uh, Damn inner wet. He said, he said, hitting some great points, guys. We shared rehearsal space with them in, in Prospects Park back in the days. Yeah, that was the other thing. You went to these rehearsal spaces, and you know you're 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 playing in a rehearsal space. We were rehearsing next door to Patty Labelle one night. Like she was in the same building. It's crazy, 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 crazy times. And then people are like, "Who's Patty Labelle?" And I rest my case again. Um, it, it was a different time. It was an exciting time. Where Sugar House is now, there used to be a, a, a sugar factory, and there were recording studios all up in that area. Oh God! It was, it was a fantastic time. Yeah, Saturday night, when my dad and I went to the record shop, um, we went to see um, two bands, Sister Ray and then a guy named Dave Weekly. I know Dave. Dave was in a band that was signed, and he he um, their band did not get the break they deserved, and that was Tease Roughhouse. They had both names at one point. What is going on over there, Jim? Nothing. And um, unbelievable. Dude, Greg. Yeah, Greg Malak. Great guy. Unbelievable talent. I'm telling you, man, it, things were on a different level back then. That's all I'm going to say. And, you know, of course, there's exceptions. But when the exception was the rule, it was a fantastic world to be in. It was a fantastic time to be going to clubs. And, and then on top of that, Going to the dance clubs was actually fun too. There were just amazing dance clubs with crazy light shows and unbelievable women, beautiful women robots. dancing, and robots coming out of the ceiling when yeah. you went to places like uh, robots. Yeah. What was that place called? Uh, Pulsation. Pulsation. And I saw Ace Freely there, which was crazy. <laughs> with T's opening up, no, d- no doubt. Well, he'd fit in with a robot. Yeah. Did you see the cat on my back? No. You didn't see the cat jump on my back? I saw it. I didn't, no. I did. I, I didn't see it either. I got a lot of responsibilities. I got my tongue stuck in this beer bottle. Sorry. So, Kat, are, you, are your guests coming on? Because we're, we're about 30, 30 minutes I, left. and I I just looked. I'm sorry. And um, I just looked, and I got no answer. I got I got a view. I think, I think our... our 
I think they're from, I think they're from just like you want to do this one today on our platform, so we don't want to double it. That's okay. We're nobody. I respect. I respect totally, but I'm. I'm just he. You know how you say never met, never meet your your music icons. Like never, never meet your heroes. I met some of mine, and they were amazing. I met Gilgamesh. I kicked his ass. It was really disappointing. <laughs> yeah, I did. So deal so, with it. So Matt Porter just asked the question. Matt's it's a battle of breaking. I just found out we're in a battle of breaking. Yeah. Okay. Matt, Matt says Matt says the following, Jim. Oh, he said, knows "You're going to lose that battle." Well, yeah, probably, but. He says, you guys should do a show where you play tracks from some of the great bands from that era. The problem is we we need the bands to actually contact us and come in and do the show. Or at least give us permission to do With music that's not trademarked or copyrighted. That's the issue that we run into. Because we simulcast on Facebook and we put stuff on Podbean, I think Podbean were okay. Podbean, they don't care. As long as we don't care about Iran and Syria, we're okay. Facebook, everything gets silenced on us and i would love to do that i mean you have the ability on your show obviously you do a a massive podcast to over yep. twenty thousand people yeah we get kicked off facebook if it happened we have done it they it's literally happened. shut us down no they we we are we are up and coming because they changed formats they who? changed we have a sponsor that's who? a dentist who who are you talking about my podcast. Oh, see, we're talking about our podcast. We, we've we've done it. If we do it on Podbean, it's okay. Podcast, like they're okay because they're huge. So, for those that don't know, because Cat's talking and nobody knows who she is at the moment, I do. She's famous on another world. In another world, she's on a on a podcast. Uh, and if she wants to plug it right now, she can. It's with CT McManus and a bunch of other people. Please do. So, have at it, Cat. Tell them who you are and what you do. Pretend they don't have no idea who you are because they don't. Wow, I'm actually, thank you, Adler. I am, I'm on a um, a local podcast. I got invited. When you say local, these people could be listening in India. So give them specifics. We are in India. Yeah, I've seen our demo. They're not. Let her speak. I'm oh, sorry. Let me back up. So about uh, uh, six. Years ago, I had a podcast with Jojo and the crew. I'm not kidding. I'm sorry. And we had like um, Charlemagne the God before he got gigantic. And we had um, big Mac. like huge rappers from this area that got like really big. Mm-hmm. And um, it was from Heartthrob Studios. And I got a random call from a guy that I fired. I fired this dude. I was his manager. Like, I fired him. He was not doing shit. He was all about, like, podcasting and music. Mm -hmm. And it was many, many moons ago. And then he called me a year after. And he was like, yo, you're, like, such a great salesperson. I think you would be great, like, a great podcaster because you're not afraid to talk to anybody. And I was like, okay. I was terrified. I was fucking terrified. And um, we just did it. And we started in his room. And then we moved to um, a bigger, nicer living room at someone else's house. And then we actually had space, which you can see on um, if you take 42 down and don't get off on the expressway just like take it down to Williamstown. see that's what i'm trying to say the people listening don't know what 42 is tell them oh, where they can right. listen to you today what format to come to what website to go to be specific as though they know nothing about you because they don't i know so I, keep, I know when you I say keep, 42 and what you're talking about but you have to give it uh, yeah as if you're explained it to nana uh, who's, got- who's technically savvy. Okay. Gotcha. Hmm. So I started with Heartthrob Studios with his last name was literally Heart. And started with five people through that show, like segmented it, 
it blew up and they were able to make sales to other people. Then I got my own show and then people used to come over to my house. But where did they, house. where did they, what, where did they hear this? This is what I'm trying to say. You have to tell uh, people. On Katniss on the radio.com. Okay. See, that's what I'm going for. Yeah. So it's not up anymore. Like you can probably find old podcasts on Katniss on the radio. So where are you now? What 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 is your uh, your venue now? Electronic. It is, how it happened. Super long story short, is me and CT just ran into each other from the circuit of mm-hmm. you and I meeting Rat Rod, me and Mike, like all of that, and um, he didn't know that I had like an actual podcasting background, like it actually. Knew me. Like segments and interviews and time and you know all of that and um they officially invited me and and um, where where is they they invited you to where are they what is it be so specific it is, it's www this or it's you know it's not it's, it's on facebook it's on facebook okay Rock and roll. So if you if I go into Facebook and I type in Rock and Roll Union, I will find them, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. But sometimes the technology doesn't work and you have to go to YouTube and you have to search YouTube Rock and Roll Union podcasts. That's what we're looking for here, Kat. That's how all this works. No, I, I know how all this works. <laughs> but, love- yeah, I understand that you do, but you're not explaining it in a way that the people out there can understand. So now I've, I've gone to the website and I'm going to take that link and I'm going to post. Sorry, excuse me. Jeez. I'm going to take that. No, we don't want that. That's not. No. Hold on. There Wait, it is. Stop. Copy. You don't want to do that? What I had was. She doesn't want to do that. Why is it doing that? Well, don't do hey, that. <clears throat> yes, sir. That, that that website you're on now on Facebook has it got like a little circle that says Rock Roll Union with a little guitar in the middle. Yes, it does. Music yeah, worth yeah. fighting for. Hang on there. Hang on a second. So just like a join group, right? Follow Rock and Roll Union. Cat, Cat, uh, this is Mark. I'm, I missed the last ten minutes. Can you go back and and re-explain that? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to take you literally, Mark. You can just you, you, we'll do a night when you can just meet all these people and smack the shit out of them, okay? <laughs> Mark Mark Perry's the drummer from Blonde James Blonde. It's a local I, Philly band. Spawn, and I've actually heard you on Spotify. Are you on Spotify, Mark? I don't think so. Oh, because yes, now you are. Uh oh. <laughs> Your microphone's cutting out now, Cat. Hello. Jiggle it. Gotcha. Just a little bit. Jiggle it. Jiggle it. Jiggle it. Just a little bit. Touch it. Touch it. Jiggle it. Jiggle it. Touch it. Touch it. Jiggle 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 and that's Most. the link that 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 Kat wants you guys to, that are listening, guys and gals that are listening, go there and you'll find links to the podcast, so you can actually hear her in her own forum, uh, doing my doing what she does well. In my own space, one of the coolest things I actually have to admit is um, Land of Oz. Oh, I know um, those guys well. I know them really well. Now, yeah. So. Do, um, we interviewed them last week and I know they, them so well it would blow your mind, but that's a whole nother story. They, they, they were just like, like I was, I didn't know what to expect from them. Cause I'm like an Aussie tribute band. Like, yeah. Okay. Cool. Like, and I, I watched your videos. Like I knew who they were. I did my research and never seen them live. And like they came on and he was like cracking his knuckles. Who he? Like, like this. Who like, he? Who he was cracking his knuckles. All the rings on. All the rings. All the rings. Who? He was like who? on his who? glasses off. 
taking his hair down long, putting it back. And it was like, dude, this guy wants us to ask us. Who? Like, to ask Who? Which guy? Like, There's five guys in the band. Which guy are you talking about? Um, uh, uh, Desco. Yeah. Steven Desco. Steven he was Desco. in a band called Bicycle Pete in the 90s. I know Steve real well. Yeah. I, I, he, and so I, I finally just kind of like, I kind of had to like, like bowl myself in because it was just kind of this, like nothing bad about the show. I'm not like demeaning the show. It was just kind of like the same, like questions, like what are your influences? Generic oh, questions. Hey, what your influences I like are vanilla like, ice cream yeah like and he, so he was like doing the ring thing so i was like oh my god like rings on all your fingers yeah me too yeah. <laughs> steve steve's actually gotten up with old school and done a couple songs here and there but no I, way yeah he's cool as fuck dude i know steve from way back in the day um on finger and was like one's my wedding ring and then he started bringing out like memorabilia of Ozzy which was cool as fuck and like it I have cool. Ozzy's autograph in my hallway of the house what? I have Ozzy's autograph of course you do that doesn't even surprise me anyway we were talking about my interview and my thoughts um, so we turned the interview around to like basic Paula, I did that on purpose. I was like, relax, relax. If you need, if you need uh, um, Ozzy's autograph authenticated, I know a guy for relatively inexpensive. Shut him. Uh, easy, was it easy? The thing about Rock and Roll Union, which I'm really excited about, is is um, the thing about T C T who is the creator of Rock and Roll Union, and he's amazing. He's amazing. The thing is, is he's just very, very close to these people. So they wanted to bring in a third party to who wasn't like wasn't close to these people who didn't know Land of Oz or tribute bands <laughs> that were super popular in the area, and so. Um, I feel like I bring like a little bit of edge to the show, so because like, so I'll, I will have to interrupt, which sucks. But like you know, like I asked Desco about his rings, and like I said, he was super excited. He was like, "Thank!" It, it was like relief. Like, thank God, someone asked me about like. Because I always been in Aussie. What was well, you my got, original? You gotta do. Like, you gotta like. You gotta like play to what they want to talk about. Correct. Yeah. And and it was it was so obvious to me. And and I attribute that to my background, which is why I kind of talked about my background with rappers. Is they are very flashy about what they want to talk about, like very very flashy, and that falls over into trivia bands and 80s rock. It really does. Say what you want about them. They're good marketers. Yeah, it really does. Like, it, it, marketers. So, talking like a half hour over he was supposed to, messaged me after the show and he was like, thanks for noticing my rings, man. And I was like, like, I got like a little bit of like choked up. So I was like a little bit of pride. I was like, I noticed something. Like, he was like, I was trying. I'm like, and and it and it's not a slight to Rock and Roll Union. Like, so at all. was was it, Matt on the show with you? Know, it's just that they know each other. Like he already knows those facts. Was was so Matt was Matt on the show with you? The guitar player, I, the younger guitar player, was he on as well? No. no? It was uh, Joe and Kevin. Okay. Uh, the so, older guy, where he's literally like, I feel like he should be like, oh, I'm going to eat a sandwich. Who oh. was this guy you were talking What was his name? Hmm. Nobody. Nobody. I, 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 could, I didn't hear who you said it was, but I, I know everybody in the band. I know every each member of the oh, band. Family guy, they do the skit on Ozzy. And Dasko cracked up 
on uh, Family Guy, they they show Ozzy on stage, and he's like, "I'm gonna eat this sandwich." Oh right, right, right. And, oh yeah, I'm gonna save it for later instead of eating the bat because he's getting older. <laughs> So I made that joke. It flew over well on my show, but apparently <laughs> not on yours. We have a different demo. I just I just came across a picture on the Cell Block Rock Club page. Sorry, I was laughing. I was on mute. My bad. Of the shot. Oh, that was good. You got it. Did you get it? Oh yeah. Okay. We have very I was laughing too, Kat. See, Steph got it. Is it coming back? Yeah, it's Stephanie, guys. That's all you care about. Yeah, I only care about it's Stephanie. And Rose and Paula all got it. That's all I care about. Uh, Paula bailed. Uh, well, if Rose and specifically Steph got it. Nope, Rose bailed too. Ste Stephanie is the only uh, other woman on the show. As did everybody on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. We're going to talk to our marketing people. It. I'm going to save it for later. Uh, uh, Sharon, make me a sandwich. Damn. Who, who's uh, walking the streets? I am. I hear, I hear street noise. I don't know. It's just, it's just slipped away again. It's me on the street. It's oh, there it goes. It's better. The it's fine. So we have nine minutes left of the show. Yeah. So no. how would we like to... Uh, let me see if I have any notes. Do our final nine minutes. No. Well, I did want to do a Let's shout out. Another Aussie joke. Well, I, I don't have an Aussie like a fart. I was going to say happy birthday to Aid Edmondson and Christopher Ryan from the Young Ones. They just had uh, birthdays. Aid uh, Edmondson turned sixty-five on the twenty-fourth, and Christopher Ryan turned seventy-two on the twenty-fifth today. Which oh, yeah. really bothers me. Why? So, because bother that, me at all. It's, he's old as hell. Yeah. I used to watch him when I was a kid. You know, I, I need to do a shout out to Meatloaf. Yeah, that's I don't think awesome. he's going to hear it. He might. You never know. He decided not to get vaccinated, got sick, and died. That's a shame. It, COVID? Is that what yeah. happened? Yeah, it is what happened. Oh, that sucks. Was, I thought it was something else. I had no idea. Did you? Uh, oh, by the way, did you hear? Um, and I'm not a big Neil Young fan, but Neil Young is going to pull his shit off of, heard, of uh, Spotify. Spotify. <laughs> I, heard I that. read that today. He's going to pull it because of people like Joe Rogan and their anti-vax nonsense. He doesn't want to be part of that. No association if, necessary. If you is his. Vaxers off. I will not allow you to play the Spotify music anymore. It's weird. It's just crazy. I, I don't listen to Joe Rogan. I mean, that guy couldn't even keep his hair. So I loved that guy back in the day. I I've wa I watched an interview with him. He did an interview with David Lee Roth, which I thought was fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. What I don't I didn't remember. I never listened to his interviews. There, there, it was great. I you know I didn't know anything about him other than you know I used to watch him on news radio. He was great. Yeah, that's that it. was a great show. But I, I watched I watched uh, his interview with David Lee Roth. It was it was spectacular. What's like that? No, I, I, I agree with Adam. Like, I love Joe Rogan, and then he went nuts. Yeah. Well, that, that you know, sometimes there people do go nuts, and sometimes there's technique to create controversy, and controversy generates ratings. It's true. I don't, I don't, I don't know which it is with him. I think he actually is uh, true to the cause, if you will. Um, jump in, Jiminy. I, I just... Uh, uh, you know, to each their own. But when you start affecting the greater good, I have to question your motive. Yeah, I think it's about money at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do we got? Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really care. I couldn't really get into him, especially when he did Fear Factor. Yeah. Well, did you see the documentary, The Comedy Store, where they all told him to get off Fear Factor because it was beneath him? Fear Factor was beneath him? Yeah, yeah, there was an HBO special where, like, Bob Saget was rest in peace. And, now, that's uh, a guy. Good um, person. Good person. The, the, the 
the ginger kind of bald guy. What's his name? <laughs> Gaffigan? <laughs> Carrot Top's got too much hair, so it's not him. No, 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 no. He's like bald, hysterical as fuck. Uh, but anyway, there's a show called The Comedy Store, HBO. Okay. And they like, literally told him, they were like, you're like, you're too good to host that. Like, you need to come back. Not at all. You need to be a comedian. And then he got great again. And then he, like, just dip into, like, crazy, like, I don't know, like, you know, vaccines suck. Everybody sucks. The world sucks. I don't know. Yeah, I think he's like Samson's hair fell out and he lost his mind. Yeah, if you watch the Comedy Store on HBO, like you, you're like you're gonna be like, really? That's Joe Rogan. I've seen him. I've seen his stand up. Yeah. I'm just kind of like, nah. No, no, it's it's a it's it's an interaction with comics. It's a documentary. Mm. They all just or they're all sitting like, on a roof, just like chilling, talking about, but like the Comedy Store, Paul. Um, Biodome. Um, yeah, that's terrible. Mom owned it. Yeah, uh, Polly. Polly Schaefer. Polly Shore. No, Polly Shore's mom. Polly uh, Shore. I'm sorry. And she also invented uh shit. White out. No, no, that was Michael Nesmith's mother. His grandmother. How much content I'm bringing to your show? What is going on? I can't think of Polly Shore's mom's name. She, she. Well, she owned the comedy. Club. Yeah, and I can't think of her damn name. But I, I thought that their money came from the White Out thing. No, that's Mike Smith's Smith family. Uh, is it Dinosaur? Dinosaur. Oh my God, Burt Reynolds loved her. Is that horrifyingly scary? I hope not. Of course, that do that. And Merv Griffin. Ooh. I own resorts. I'm dead. I've been for a long time. I remember oh, watching um, Merv Griffin's Crosswords when I was a kid. Jesus Christ! You're not that old. No, it was it was like around like the two thousands. Mitzi Shore, God damn it! There's her name. And it's, and uh, Wheel of Fortune yeah. is also yeah. a Merv Griffin in, invention, yeah. and I think also uh, uh, everybody, Dad, and probably the uh, twenty thousand dollar whatever pyramid. Everything's a Merv Griffin joint. Tic 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 tac the dough. <laughs> yeah, he owned um, everything, man. Jo- Joker's wild, all that shit. Remember yeah. Joker's Wild? They had that like creepy dude who that hosted it. Wink Martindale. No, it wasn't. No, Wink, no Joker's Wild. Oh my God, what was that guy's God name? God damn, I yeah, gotta look at you. You're right. Was that the same guy? Was that the same guy? He was a heavy. Was that smoker. No Whammy heavy. show? No Whammies. No. no Whammies. No. That's what I was thinking. The same guy nope. did that. Joker's when they like spun the wheel. And it's like Joker, Joker, something else. You know. Yeah, it was. It was Jack um, Barry. Oh, oh, God. Oh, my so God. Barry. That sounds familiar. Jack Barry. Jack Barry. Barry. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the Joker's Wild. <laughs> yeah. Like a stupid. Smoking his Salem menthols. Oh God, definitely. And, I like my Salem's without a filter, uh, just like I like my women with no filter. Exactly. I like my women with no bras. You know what I'm saying? So topless. Yes, yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Spin the wheel. Let's go for it. Jokers are wild. Am I, am I being seen by other than two people? No, just us. And my dog. Guy? I have a trick. You have a trick? Okay. Tricks are for kids. Easy now. Oh, I know this trick. Is this a trick? You know this trick? Yeah. I want to see this trick. Steph. Steph can't see a story. Yeah. No, I, I know what you're doing. Oh, Dad. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. We're, we're yeah. older than you. Yeah, I've done that. Yep, very good. Well done, well done. Well done. Well done. Bravo. But, but it, it's the after party that we're looking for now. It's a brav There it is. Ah, oh, there it is. That's the after party. Yep. There we go. I think I nailed it. I, I had it all correct in my head. Everything in your head was right? Dimes. Your head's, yeah, your head's just a scary place, man. Dimes. Wait, what were, what were you expecting? Yeah, what were you expecting? Dimes. Dimes? Yep. I don't know what he's talking about. No, I know what he's talking about. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. 
Perfect. I love that. Jesus. I have no idea. I'm an innocent. In the White House. Yeah, I went to Catholic school, man. Touch it. Touch it. Touch it. Touch it. What's that? There's no point to that. There's no point to going the opposite direction once yeah. you've gone the other way. Stop it. <laughs> Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Yeah, that's fine. It's fuzzy math. That is your right. Make sure you see your brother Stuart. Stuart? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> Well, this has been an, an, uh, an enlightening show. Uh, it, it went tangified. Yeah. We saw the premiere on the interwebs of of Trifalon with 77 Gold and Silent Scream. We got to listen to uh, some cool people call in. We got Tom Atkins, who's been around. And we got Cat. Uh, dog uh, dog show and pony show going on at one time, all in one, explaining the entire world as she knows it and how to get to her podcast. And Stephanie called in. We barely got to even hear from her because we've been yelling and screaming. And we also had the, the wonderful and, and attractive Mark Perry from Blonde James Blonde. We all drink too much. That's the whole point. And Mark's the man. Hey, Jim, did I tell you where I'm going Thanks, on Friday? Doc. You too. No, where are you going on Friday? I'm going to see Third Eye Blind's documentary, The Opening Night in New York. Mm, exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Very nice. I like New York. No, I love New York, but I really love Washington, D.C. Okay. Very, very nice. But I really love Vegas. Oh, we're going yes. Yep. Who doesn't love Vegas? I, I love it. I, I, I think I'm going for like the ninth time in April. I've never been, but Limbo Loa. Yeah. Yeah. Limbo Loa. There you go. That's cool, man. We got to hear a report uh, about what happened and how it was. Yeah. Well, you'll yeah. you'll know in a few months. I put in. I put in right, you and someone to Stephanie. That is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. And me and Steph had like a fucking this conversation. I was like, I found someone that is not like like underkin's life. Don't stay after like. No, I'm serious, Steph. Like I get know, it. I get it. I get it. Like it wasn't. I I don't feel like it was fake or like put on. Like we just like both like feel this way about. Like, she runs out with me in the back of old school shows with the, you know, in the freak corner. In yeah, the weird kid corner. Yeah. In return for money. That's where we belong. In return for money. There was no, like, there was no, like, uh, propaganda answers. Like, she just said everything I was thinking when I got in front of her. That's oh, true. Thank you, yeah. Oh, thank you, guys. Well, that's, that's <laughs> it's time. All right, guys, we're going to have to wrap it up because it's 10 o'clock and gonna throw us off the air and stuff. So as much as I would love to stay here for seven or eight hours. What the hell is that? Was that? Off. that was my heart stopping. Mr. Adler being bizarre. But, uh, yeah, we'll be back Bye, next guys. week. Bye, Stephanie. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Stephanie. Good night. Thank you, Madam Rose. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Thank you, Madam Cat. Thank you, Jim Perry. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Paula. Who, Paula. As always, because, you know, what? Paula stopped me on the street today, literally, to talk about the podcast. So See that? Yeah. That's why I like it, and I like it because my neighbors get freaked out. She's in a cop car, so that's uh, that's just a bonus. Well, I, I get to talk proud. to her, and they get freaked out. Like I can picture it now. What, what did the cop want with you? What's going on? Oh, they freak out. They think I'm in trouble. Oh my god! Can you get arrested for marijuana? They're like, "Hey, Jim, <laughs> I, I I want you to be on my team." Yeah, yeah, exactly like that. 
Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, thank you, uh, Lisa, for showing up. Did we miss anybody? I, Tom I Atkins? Not, yeah. God damn, we have Madam, a lot of people. Madam Bendover? Yeah. Exactly. That's it, exactly. Yes. All right, so we're going to wrap up the Podbean podcast, and uh, that's about it. So we'll see you guys next week on Tuesday, same time, same stuff, and, uh, you know, all that shit, and later. And maybe even more. Yeah, probably. <laughs> See you guys. I can't-